Welcome to Custom Reads. Let's start with the story. I am facing the pain of my husband's infidelity while I am pregnant. I 28 and my husband 28 am married since summer 2018. We have been together since summer 2014, which means our nine-year anniversary is fast approaching. Right now I'm 30 weeks pregnant with our first child, a baby we had both wanted for many years after struggling to conceive after losing our first pregnancy. Before all this happened, I always thought that if my partner ever cheated on me, I would leave him in a heartbeat. To me, infidelity represents a deep disrespect, and I always believed I could never tolerate that. But I never expected it would happen to me, especially after dedicating 8.5 years to this man. Together we built a life that included a house, two cars, two dogs, a cat, and dreams of a family. My heart aches every day, and I know my heightened emotions during pregnancy contribute to my sensitivity, but I'm so tired of waking up each morning feeling heartbroken. When I discovered the affair, I confronted my husband, and he admitted that he had begun sleeping with this girl, claiming they had been intimate three times. At that time, I was in my first trimester, and he knew how sick I had been. I spent every day feeling nauseous, literally throwing up until around dinner time, and sleeping. He has always had a demanding job that kept him busy, but he would consistently check in with me throughout the day. I work from home and am self-employed, making significantly less than he does. After we lost our first pregnancy, we discussed this situation in depth and agreed that it was best for me to focus on managing the house and our pets while being a stay-at-home mom when we finally had a baby. So, while I earned less, it was a choice we both made together. During those check-ins he would always express his love and concern for me. He would call me between meetings and text me to announce he had arrived safely whenever he went up. It never felt like a burden for him to check in, because we genuinely wanted to communicate with each other during our free moments. That's how our relationship had been for almost the entirety of our time together, it was just natural for us. When I confronted him about the affair, I was so blindsided that I gave him another chance. The situation didn't make sense to me, and even now it still doesn't. I was 12 weeks along with a baby I had wished for for years, and I had this vision of our family that I couldn't let go of. We agreed he would go to work the next morning and end it with her, and he thought it would be easy because it was just sex without any feelings involved. I later learned that this girl knew about me, and I had visited his office for lunch several times. My husband had pictures of me on his desk and computer, so there were constant reminders of our life together. He told me in later conversations that before the affair began, this girl would joke about how I was too hot for him and that she planned to steal him away from me. Apparently, she identifies as bi but leans heavily towards women. Before the affair he described her as unattractive, and he, along with his male colleagues, except for one, found her unappealing. After he ended things with her, she didn't take it well at first, she returned a few hours later, crying and begging him not to leave her. He shared that she clung to him, and while he mentioned her abandonment issues, I honestly couldn't care less about her problems. I was the one carrying his child, the one he had been with for almost nine years. He promised me he had ended the affair. He went to get tested afterward, as I needed that reassurance, and he was clean. He showed me the results, knowing it was a critical condition for me. But for the next month, I watched him leave every morning, and as soon as he walked out the door, I would break down, sometimes begging him to call in sick and stay home with me, I was a complete wreck, feeling completely alone in my turmoil. We had a vacation planned in May, which we had been looking forward to for months, and I somehow convinced myself that getting away would help us reconnect. I counted down the days until that trip all while keeping my feelings bottled up inside. During that month the stress took a toll on my body, I lost 22 pounds because I couldn't eat. Each time I tried, I ended up throwing up. My husband witnessed my agony as I became a shadow of my former self, trying to grow our child while battling constant nausea and emotional distress. My physical condition deteriorated so badly that my face broke out in what looked like hives, my body was literally trying to expel whatever was inside me, and I had popped blood vessels all over my skin from crying and being sick. When we went on our trip, it was a mix of good times and painful moments. While there were some happy memories I was still so broken and had no trust in him. I felt something was off during that whole month, even with him giving me access to his phone. I would check it in front of him and also sneak glances whenever he was asleep or in the shower to ease my worries. But after the vacation, everything took a turn for the worse. The nagging feeling I had back in April never really faded but it intensified to the point where I felt like I was losing my mind. He would tell me he loved me, that it was truly over with her, and that he would be a good husband and the best father to our daughter. 
despite wanting so desperately to believe him. Something deep inside me whispered that he was lying. One morning, while he showered, I went into the bathroom to pee. His phone was sitting on a pile of his work clothes. I grabbed it, thinking I would check it like I had done before, assuming I would find nothing. Instead, I found a thread of messages with her from the night before in his WhatsApp. The day before had been a long workday for him, something I dreaded even before I learned of the affair. Being apart from him for extended hours made me miss him so much. I remember offering to bring him lunch even though we lived an hour away from his office and he told me not to worry about driving. He said he would convince a co-worker to bring him something so I wouldn't waste gas. But in reality, it was her who brought him lunch while he was texting her at the same time he was texting me. Those texts haunt me even now. She had written, I miss Yao, and he replied in kind. Clearly, their relationship had progressed further than I was led to believe over the past month. When she brought him lunch, he texted her, I just want you and a burger, and then, hours later, they were joking about sneaking everyone out of the office so they could be alone. She said, now I get to have you. Reading those messages while I was 16 weeks pregnant shattered me completely. I confronted him, and he promised that they hadn't had sex, even though it sounded like they were on the verge of it in those messages. He admitted he was still sleeping with her, just not that day I guess. This all unfolded back in May. The day after I confronted him again, and he confessed that he never really stopped, I left him. He tried to explain himself, saying his story was half true. When he spoke to her about ending things, she came back crying and begging. He described an encounter where she attempted to force herself on him in an empty office. He claimed he pushed her away, but she had gotten his pants down and got close enough to touch him before he managed to escape. He insisted that nothing happened that day, and that he felt it was over after that encounter. He also reminded me that I had told him I would give him a second chance, but if he ever cheated on me again, I would leave him. To him, he counted that incident as cheating again, even though when he broke down and told me this, it sounded more like she had assaulted him while he was saying no rather than him willingly cheating again. At that moment, he was scared I would leave if he told me the truth and thought he might as well not stop, fearing I would eventually find out anyway since he had already messed up. Now, fast forward to August, I have been living alone since May. After discovering the second betrayal, I left him and stayed with my aunt for a few days, along with my two dogs. I eventually returned to our house and kicked him out because I felt it was unfair for everyone to suffer except him. I was pregnant and trying to manage two six-year-old dogs who were confused and stopped eating due to the stress. Our cat, who is deeply bonded to me, was used to having me home all day, and it felt wrong to leave all of our pets to deal with this alone, while he was at work for over ten hours. He was the one who had caused this mess, so it felt unjust that he didn't have to deal with it. So here I am, thirty weeks pregnant, preparing to sell our house and move back into my dad's place with our three animals and my baby when she arrives. The hurt runs deep. I genuinely believe that my husband was the love of my life, my soulmate. All our friends who I've talked to about our separation are shocked because this behavior is so out of character for him. We were known as the couple who could face anything together. My family feels the same way. They were so proud of how wonderful my husband had been to me for the past 8.5 years. He was emotionally supportive and kind. We supported each other through the loss of my mom, the death of our first child, and other hardships. We had been each other's rocks, and now I'm carrying his daughter, whom I already love deeply. I know he hurt me and changed me as a person, but it's incredibly hard to forget the years of happiness we shared, and accept that they might be over. The awful part is that I would probably take him back if he came to me, said the right things, and made promises that I could believe. But instead I find myself living alone, while I grow this baby and care for the pets we chose, and raised together. Meanwhile he appears to be living with the girl he cheated on me with. Every time I drive past his apartment, I see her car parked there, sometimes even when his car is gone. He insists she doesn't have a key and promises that she won't interfere with him being a father when the baby arrives. But it's evident that he's made a choice to prioritize her over the life we built together. It hurts deeply because he's already replaced me. A 20-year-old girl is now sleeping next to my husband, sharing meals with him, and sitting in his passenger seat. This isn't how I envisioned my life unfolding. I wish I could stay firm in my feelings of hatred for him, because I do feel a strong disdain for what he has done to me. I have had several hours over the past few months where I make sure he knows how much he hurt me and how much I despise him for ruining the woman I used to be. But I still love him, and I long for the family I was promised. We faced so many struggles before finally getting pregnant. 
The month I became pregnant, I told him that if having a baby wasn't in the cards for us, I would come to terms with it. I wanted to be a mom, but I could be fulfilled in our relationship without a child. Then, when I finally got pregnant, I felt like everything was falling into place. Our dreams of having a family were finally coming true. But now, those dreams seem shattered. I'm really unsure how Reddit works, and I realize this post is incredibly long, so I don't expect anyone to read it entirely. I'm not sharing this for validation or for anyone to tell me what I already know that he's in the wrong. I also don't want anyone to judge me for still loving a man who has disrespected and mistreated me so deeply over the last four months. With our anniversary approaching, I feel unbearably lonely in this quiet house that I now have to pack up all by myself. I wanted a place to express my feelings. If you choose to comment, please be kind. I feel weak enough as it is, I've been with him since we were both barely 19, and moved directly from my childhood home into an apartment with him. I've never spent a single adult year alone, and it's heartbreaking. I try to establish no contact but we're selling a house and I'm in my third trimester with his baby. I just hate him, and I hate myself for allowing this to happen. I want him to wake up and see the damage he has done but I fear he will avoid accountability for his actions. I don't understand how he could betray me like this. TLDR I'm a sad pregnant lady who doesn't know how to move on from my husband of nearly a decade cheating on me, and I needed a place to share what I'm going through. Comments. Happy Banana 134. I'm a sad pregnant lady who doesn't know how to move on from my husband of nearly a decade cheating on me. You need to add in strong. Seriously. You're super strong. Deciding to leave is really hard, and you've absolutely done the right thing here. Things are going to seem bleak, but they will get better. One day, it'll hurt less and then one day it won't hurt at all. He is the one losing here, he's thrown away a loyal partner, and what could have been a happy family unit. All you've lost is someone you could never trust. OOP, it's very hard for me to feel strong, because it seems like this is the only thing I can think about every day, so thank you. It's difficult to not be hard on myself in this situation, but I do think you're right. I know that he is the one losing here. I just wish my daughter could have the life we both wanted for her for so many years, but he decided to ruin it for her. Nihilistic Fishstick. I wanted you to know I read every word. You're a human being and nobody reasonable would expect you to be a robot. I left my relationship of 21 years almost three years ago, and even though I ended it for my own mental health and for my kids, and have a fantastic partner now, there isn't a day that goes by that I don't get a random thought about him. The conversations we had are routine, the dinners he cooked, the intimacy we had. All the family videos are still way in the back of my phone's gallery still. Your feelings are completely normal, and it will get better I promise. You are the main priority at the moment, and you have to keep being strong to get yourself ready to move on and be there for your baby girl. The hard part is over friend, and you survived it, you got this. OP. I hope that one day I will be able to find a fantastic partner who will show my daughter the way a woman is supposed to be treated. I really thought I had that already, or else I wouldn't have procreated with him. Your story gives me hope. I'm in no place to go looking, being seven months pregnant, moving and emotionally fucked up beyond belief, but maybe one day. Update 10 months later. If you don't want to read the whole post, the synopsis is essentially that my F28, husband M28, cheated on me after 8.5 years together while I was 12 weeks pregnant with our first child. It's now June 11th and my daughter just turned 8 months old. My water broke and I drove myself to the hospital and then labored and gave birth alone. My daughter was born two weeks early only, and she was completely healthy and had no issues. She is doing amazing and the love I have for her is so all-encompassing that sometimes I don't even know what to do. She's a great baby, and is so loved by not just myself, but my dad, my brothers, my aunt she is adored by my whole family, and because we live with my dad, her birth has brought all of us together closer than we've been in a long, long time. I absolutely love being her mom. My ex-husband was served divorce papers in February by my dad, who volunteered to be the one to do it, and our divorce was finalized in May. The way that my feelings for him changed almost in an instant after I had given birth to my daughter was shocking, but it was like as soon as she was born just the thought of this man disgusted me. He visits for about an hour a week, once a week, and has done since she's been born. We have a parenting plan in the works but every time it's drawn up by my lawyer, he finds something else that's wrong with it and chooses to not sign. 
It's been very irritating having to deal with this man who I once loved and now don't recognize, and watch as he pretends on social media that he is an active, attentive father when I've done quite literally everything for this baby and he does the barest minimum he can get away with. This next part may be very shocking, but the girl he cheated on me with and moved into an apartment with directly from our marital home ended up cheating on him literally within the same week that our divorce finalized and she was kicked out of his place. It took about a year, but he did come back groveling after all, which was absolutely wild to me. Now for the actual shocking part of this update, I have met a man. After spending my entire pregnancy alone and heartbroken, I had sworn off men in relationships, and then this one just kind of appeared in my life. I have horrible trust issues now, and it's been really, really hard considering the deep betrayal that happened to me last year, but my boyfriend is the most gentle, calm, understanding guy I could have found. We met when my daughter was two months old, and he started taking me on little weekend dates for just a couple of hours at a time, and was always very considerate of me having a newborn, which he reassured me several times over that it was not an issue, and he actually has experience working with kids in the past, and then in March we had the conversation and defined the relationship. In these six months, he has met my family and has become one of my daughter's favorite people. I've met his brother and sister-in-law, and when his parents come into town later this month, he's introducing me and we're all getting dinner together. I feel lucky to have this man in my life, and a stable father figure for my daughter, and I am really hoping he is actually who he's been showing me he is. Obviously when my ex-husband came to apologize and cry for what he'd done to me, I was already very locked in with my boyfriend, but even if I hadn't been the answer would have been no. Our house has not yet sold, and I'm kind of losing my mind about it, but there's nothing to really be done to help that matter. I know this may sound like revenge corn, but I promise it's not. Karma has just been working hard for me and my little bean Tilda my boyfriend dotes on us and makes me believe in love again. He is so handsome and so sweet and the complete opposite of who my ex-husband ended up being. I am really hoping he is a good egg because I accidentally fell in love with him when I didn't mean to, but I do now know that I was strong enough to leave a marriage with a baby on the way, so if he ends up screwing me over, I know I'll be strong enough to leave him too. The fact that my ex's affair partner cheated on him absolutely tickles me, to be completely honest. I'm still living with my dad, plus my two dogs and cat that he abandoned me with during my pregnancy, but honestly, it could absolutely be worse. My dad helps as much as he can and loves his grandbaby so much, and it's been so sweet watching him turn into this absolute softy of a grandpa. I don't know if anyone remembers me slash my post, or if this update is necessary at all but. Here it is. I am big time not in love with the guy who cheated on me, left me, and is an absent father to the baby I grew all on my own and raised all on my own. TLDR I am a single mother with a gorgeous baby girl and we are both doing really, really well, while I watch my cheating ex-husband's life slowly fall apart. Comments. Libismum. Yay. He not only landed on your feet, but he got a taste of his own medicine. A truly satisfying update. Benzoma. It's not irony when, if they cheated with you they'll cheat on you, comes to pass, but it sure is hilarious slash satisfying to see congrats op, keep living your best life. S'mores. Good job. You survived. It's all gravy from now on. He pretends on social media that he is an active attentive father. Can you get some relative to be on watch out and shoot him down every time, he still hasn't even signed a parenting plan or sold the house? Good luck. You can do this. I believe in you. Deleted. As a courtesy I went back and read the original post. And it was honestly heartbreaking. Sounds to me like his talk of being a father wear empty platitudes, and when the reality struck he self-sabotaged as an escape. Then he got cheated on, but what did he expect? To live happily ever after with someone who had shown they had zero regard for others. I have no sympathy. I'm glad you are having a better time of it now. And hope it continues for you. Lyndon Lil Blue Balls Maybe because I'm the vengeful type, I would have told the company that two workers were having sex on company property. Especially after the affair partner laughed in her face. Had a cakes. If she'd laughed in my face like that I'm not sure I could have stopped myself from physically ripping the fucking smile off her face.